Dude, it's okay to be nervous, but you shouldn't be afraid of being nervous. Let me explain. What's good everyone, my name is Jetsu and I want to help you get better at commentary. I still get pretty nervous on the mic, and I even get nervous talking to the webcam right now. Stage fright, fear of public speaking, fear of being in front of large crowds, these are things that are pretty common even amongst the commentators that you know and love. So we all kind of experience the same kind of stage fright, but you have to be able to deal with those nerves and deal with that stage fright if you want to continue getting work at events and continue leveling up your game. So especially if you're casting a game that you really love, like wow, I love the scene, I love the players, I want to do them justice on the mic, but if you have that stage fright, if you have that nervousness, you know, you're going to speak either too slow or maybe even too fast, right? Because you're so nervous, you're going to stumble over your words, you're, you're going to miss the crucial important moments that you want to do a really good job of communicating to the audience, and in general, you're just not going to be able to show your best personality or your real personality when it comes time to getting on that stream setup. So don't worry, I have four tips for you guys and a bonus at the end to help you get over your stage fright. All right, so step one is cover the basics, food, water, and sleep. So if you're hungry on the mic, the only thing you're gonna be thinking about isn't what's the next mix up or what is this player thinking in this interaction? You're gonna be thinking about going to the Wawa's down the street and whatever your next order is gonna be. So you're gonna be super distracted. If you don't have enough water before and during your block, your voice is eventually gonna start sounding super raspy, which for some people, I, I get it, is an appeal of your voice, but generally you don't wanna sound like you're straining yourself on the mic. You want to have proper hydration before the block so that you're good going into it and then also have a bottle of water or even, you know, a large hydro flask, for example, so that you can keep yourself hydrated in between and during your commentary blocks. Make sure you have a good meal before you head onto the mic, maybe one or two hours before so you're not super bloated and also try not to eat too much. And of course, the biggest one out of the three is make sure you have a good night's rest. Seven to eight hours is ideal, but definitely no less than six. If you're pulling up to the mic with four or five hours of sleep, you think that you're pulling it off well because you're kind of delirious, but trust me, people can tell. So make sure to cover the basics. All right, point number two is do your homework. So you wouldn't pull up to an exam and not study, right? If it's something that you want a decent grade in or you want to give a decent performance on the mic, obviously you're going to do some preparation or some studying before you head into the day of the event. So what are some things that you should prepare before heading onto the mic for commentary? One is reaching out to your co-commentator. Nice to meet you. What is your style like? How do I how do I say your name when I refer to you as my co-commentator? Of course, looking at the players that are going to be at the bracket. Are there any notable players, people who are particularly good at their character Character, or even play a really standard character in a very unique way. These are a lot of things that you can bring up when they come onto the screen for commentary that might add a little bit of, you know, depth and pizzazz and make you feel a lot more equipped when they head up to the stream station. If the tournament wants you to plug any ads in particular, some of them are going to have ad slides prepared or some of them even just have general events that, oh, if you have some downtime, you know, for waiting for the next stream match, if you could plug our next event or this 3v3 or this collaboration, it would be really cool. Having it in your mind, knowing that you can chill it if you want to kill some time is usually pretty good. And all of those things sound super small, and each one of them in particular isn't going to level up your game a ton, but being in the habit of going through that checklist, having those things checked off ahead of time, is going to save you a lot of stress in the long run, and just gives you less things to worry about when you're on the mic. Point number three is bring your friend. So me personally, I mentioned this already, but I still get kind of nervous, especially when I'm doing a new tournament or I'm working with a commentator that I haven't had previous work with before. So a lot of times what I'll do to kind of mitigate some of that, especially the initial nervousness, is send the stream link out to my friend. You can copy and paste the twitch.tv link or YouTube if they happen to be streaming over there. You can send that link over to your friend discords or your Facebook messenger chat, etc., etc. Whatever groups you kind of have, just so that you know know that you have some friendly faces in the chat that are cheering you on like, oh, Jetsu, let's go. That's my boy. Jetsu fans come in, etc, etc. It is a very small and silly thing, but sometimes it's just nice to know that you're being supported by the people in the chat and it helps you warm up a little bit, bring your authentic personality. And maybe you can even feel more comfortable being the same person that you are with those friends on the mic. All right, and tip number four is keep commentating. So you're not gonna get confident just by studying theory and watching videos on commentary, right? The way that you get better is with focused 
practice going into a commentary block, trying to improve one thing, and then doing that over and over and over again. You kind of want to have, like we mentioned in the previous video, if you guys haven't checked that out, you want to have a weekly rotation of different commentary brackets that you know that you can get consistent practice in. And also, you're never going to get over your nerves 100%. Like we mentioned before, even the greats, you know, the famous commentators that you know and love, still experience stage fright. But the reason you don't see it is because they're so used to dealing with it. They have their pre-show routine. They know exactly what to prepare. And they've done it so many times that even when they're feeling nervous, they pull up to, you know, Evo Top 8, Sunday night, the final bracket of the entire tournament. They're able to keep cool because they've been in that situation before and they know that they're capable of bringing their best work. Make sure to get regular practice and keep on commentating. So bonus tip here is live in the moment on commentary, but know that in the future, there will always be more commentary blocks. So this is a bonus tip because it's kind of a long-term mindset shift rather than any one thing that you can put into practice immediately. But over time, as you commentate more blocks, you have to realize that, yeah, you're living in the moment, you want to take in everything and do justice to the moments on the screen, but if you happen to make a mistake or stumble over your words or call someone the wrong name, etc., etc., you have to remember, oh, okay, okay, if I make this mistake, this commentary block is not all there is. There will be more blocks, there will be more brackets, there will be more days where I'm time to recollect myself and prepare better. So if you make a mistake, it is not the biggest deal in the world. And sometimes the fear of even making one mistake actually just ends up ruining your performance overall in a weird way, right? So congratulate yourself, forgive yourself, do your best, and hey, keep moving because there's always going to be more on the horizon. Your best performance now is going to be topped by a better performance two or three months down the line. And your worst performance, it goes away even faster. People are going to forget about it in one, two, three weeks, and you need to be able to forgive yourself in the same way. Alrighty, so I hope those tips help. Stage fright is strong, I gotta admit, but you guys are stronger, and you just gotta remember that practice makes perfect. So make sure to get those hours of experience under your belt, and you guys will be the commentator that you want to be in no time. If you guys are looking to get into commentary, you can check out my most recent video, and if you're looking for a commentator for your next event, you're welcome to check out my summer 2023 reel. Again, I'm super proud of this one, so I hope you guys get to check it out. Peace!